I am here with Nicholas Wilton, who is an abstract, for those who don't know, he's an abstract artist from California who teaches online courses, both free and paid. And he's about to launch um, a free course, which uh, I'm recommended everybody sign up for. And so we'll be having a series of chats over the next uh, couple of weeks about art in general, um and all of the things that he has to teach us so welcome nicholas it's really nice to see you super nice to be here and uh connect with all your your pals over there uh, that's great <laughs> over here where it's freezing still you can see yeah, yeah. yeah it's warm here it's finally warm here it's really warm so <laughs> um so i first of all i have not had an opportunity to thank you and i'm going to be selfish for a second and say thank you because I took your paid course last year um, and the Creative Visionary Path program and my life could not be any more different 15 months later than it was when I took that course. And I just, I, I can't thank you enough. You kept saying when your art gets better, your life gets better. And I didn't really know what you meant, but it's so, so true. Um, so first of all, thank you. And to introduce our conversation today, I wanted to show you this, show everybody this, which is um, not a masterpiece. This is the first painting that I did when I took CVP. We had to do some intuitive painting. And it was the first painting I ever done that felt like me, um, my true self, as opposed to what I had been doing. And at that point was when I realized, oh, I have a voice. I have something inside me that's mine and that's unique. And I had thought that when they gave out unique voices, I was not in there. <laughs> I, just, I wasn't there. And um, that's what I think is so amazing about your teaching. And when I asked the questions for you, uh, at least half of them were about that, were about how do I find my voice, how do I make myself unique? So two part question, what is an artist's voice and how do you find it? Well, uh, yeah, it's great that you're bringing this up. It was a bit of a surprise to me too, because I, in terms of how to help artists and I, first of all, the information that's out there is kind of confusing and so, I kind of clarified that for myself early on and was able to start teaching people how to understand color and design and some of these principles. But as I got more into, and that's very helpful for people, and that's what we do in CVP, the Creative Visionary Program, we give all that information. But in order to really help people and what really moves the needle is the experience you have, is the experience of looking inside of themselves and, and coming and pulling out of pulling out your own voice and that's what became so interesting to me and that's why i'm teaching now because anybody can teach you know anybody can teach color you know and all that but what i'm doing here what we're doing and the coaches and everything is a particular process that allows this to open up and uh, you're just, that's just garden variety what occurs. And it's so cool how you described it. Because yeah. it's very difficult for me to say, you know, listen, this usually to get your art good, your life's got to get better. And all those things, it sounds kind of wooey, but yeah. it's very integral. And uh, so, so I discovered the lever to really, really help people quickly they're going to figure out the basics, you know, that just takes X amount of time, but to really help people to really move the needle like yourself, what you're going through and what you're pulling off now um, has to do with uh, looking within yourself and realizing as you have now that this is available to anybody. Uh, we are all completely unique. And I mean, I, I've spent my whole life making art and, and most of it teaching. And I gave up a lot of things to do this. Like I'm not very good at horseback riding. I didn't get to learn an instrument. So I don't have a lot of authority in most things really at all. I feel like, but there's one thing I know and I know what I'm talking about here. I 
I have absolute conviction that anyone who's interested in making art, they have to be interested, of course. <laughs> they, they might want to learn horseback riding or guitar, but anyone who's interested in this can make unbelievably strong art. It can be incredibly personal. They can take it as far as they want. And that's, that's what I know to be true. And I've seen it and we've proven it and we prove it. That's why CBP goes so well. And there's so many people that are really, um, you know, just turning these things into careers. And, you know, for some people, they don't necessarily want to sell their work. Um, they just want to make stuff that feels like them, which is a fantastic uh, outcome. You know, it, it doesn't matter how far you want to go. You know, a lot of people want to sell their work. And if you do want to sell your work, having your work being personal and having it being different than everyone else's, that's the business plan that I teach, <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, it, it works both. I remember when we signed up for the free course last year, and I'm sure it's the same this year, there was a, a, a checkbox to say, what do you want to know most? And I yes. said, I wanted to know how to sell my work because that's what I thought I was coming to you for. Oh, interesting. Um, but then I realized, yeah, the way to sell it is to make it better. Of course, the hadn't really got that. And um, <laughs> now I'm actually selling things like they're people, people are reacting, responding, contacting me out of the blue. And that wasn't happening before. I was having to ask yeah. them to enter things and try and get my work in front of people. And that's, that's the magic thing. Um, but somebody asked, related to what you just said, she said, so we're talking about looking inside, but she asked- You're talking about what? You're talking about what? Sorry, we just broke up for a second. We're talking about looking inside ourselves to Yes, 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 yes. And um, one of my, my uh, followers asked me, followers, that sounds like I'm Jesus, doesn't it? One of my audience asked me, how do, um, can what you like in others' work be a useful signpost to what you want to create? Or what is what you like in other work and what you make yourself actually two separate things? No, they're very connected. So, you know, I'll give the, the two minute kind of overview of how, I like people to think of this, and we dive into this uh, deeply. This is a, this is a big this is a big project. I mean, how one goes about doing this, but basically, in everyone's world and everyone's life, there's preferences we have for colors, for friends, for music, wh whatever these things are, and everyone's got a different opinion about anything. I could hold up two disparate objects of cucumber and a zucchini and people would choose one over the other or a, a paint bottle and a banana there's it doesn't always make sense what you like you just know inside there's an intuitive intuitive sense of like i prefer to live on the ocean i prefer to uh you know read as opposed to going to movies whatever these things are these preferences are are in you and it's different for everyone Everyone's got a different set of preferences. So when somebody, you know, if you make a painting, your choices about if you're paying attention to them, which is what I really focus on teaching people to really develop their discernment, to really, really look at that and really, really develop that. And so you, the, the, the decisions that you make when you're painting, the yes, no, make, will end up with work that's very unique. It just happens that way. So, and because it's going to be very different than everybody else, there's, a, there's an innate human quality that all of us have. And, and this quality is that we're all walking around the planet wanting to feel alive. We all wanna feel good. We wanna see and experience things that are different. When we see and experience things that are different, like we go on vacation or we bump into a new friend or we try and go to a painting class for the first time or we go see an amazing music show, these are different things in our life that light us up, that make us feel alive. This is how we want to feel when we're making our work. We want to be exploring, experimenting, playing, and, and playing in the world of the things that we like. When we create something based on that criteria, you end up with a piece of artwork that is more personal than other kinds of work. It doesn't look 
you're not deriving that work from looking outside of yourself, you're deriving it from, from looking within. And because it's different, other people will see it just like a new experience and say, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. Like I make watercolors, but Louise does these, I just love these colors, I wanna buy this. They're attracted to it. And as you say, they call you. This is, this, we need to understand this as artists. This is, this is why people buy artwork. This is why we make artwork. This is the offer. I mean, many people who buy artwork are not in touch with what lights them, with, with being able to do this for themselves. They can just look around in their world and say, oh, I love that painting. I'll bring that into my house. That feels like me. I'll buy that big pot. I'll buy that Jaguar. I'll have this person, you know, all these things. That's, so that's what we're involved in. It's, it's, it's creating, creating work that makes us feel alive ultimately. So when somebody's curious about, oh, but I really love so-and-so's work, that's wonderful. You, but you don't want to be copying their work. But what you want to do is you want to ask the question, oh my God, I love her work so much, but what, what part of it do I love? What part of it could I bring in? Is it the color? Is it the scale? Why, you know, there's something that lights you up. It could be someone's art. It could be a bird in a bird cage that you walk by in the pet store. It could be all of these things are grist for the mill. You want to be walking around the planet very sensitive and gathering all this data that you can then bring into your work. So it's not, it's not, you know, no one can be, you know, Monet. I mean, he already is Monet, but we can look at his work and say, oh, I love this color, the subtle color. Bring that into my work. So bring it all in. So that's it, you know, look outside of ourselves, but when we're making our work, draw upon those things, start paying more and more attention to what brings you alive. And that's a practice. That's the practice of becoming an artist. And the practice of making art is the practice of becoming yourself and feeling yeah, great. And that's what, that's what you're talking about. And I can just tell from your energy, I don't know the examples or what's happened with that, but things, when you're aligned and congruent with, with the things that make you joyful, all kinds of wonderful things happen. It's it, the universe loves paying attention to people like that, and they give you more help. They give you uh, relationships that help you. They all kinds of coincidences and all kinds of fun start happening. But yeah, it's, well, it's really what I use to to get people's art. You know, it, it self propels. You know, but yeah, because what what happened with me is as my art got bolder. Um, then if you're making bold art, then you can't be meek and mild in real life anymore. So not that I was particularly meek or mild, but I think I didn't speak up often or say what I needed or uh, yeah. put myself forward for things or suggest things. I'd have an idea and I'd think, oh, no, I won't do that. And now I have an idea and I do it or I ask somebody if I'm thinking of asking somebody, or I say to Alice, do you want to do a podcast? And I think, well, if she says no, she says no. She said, yes, so we do a podcast. I wouldn't have done that in the past. And then, then the more you do those things, then the bolder your art gets. And then the bolder the art gets, the bolder you get. Or if for someone else, it might not be bold, it might be some other thing, but if you become more of yourself, and that's what I didn't get before. Um, but, so this kind of ties into another question I have, which was from Deborah. And she says, how do you get to love every painting that you do? <laughs> do you ever love every painting that you do? Um, no. Can you hear me? I feel like I'm frozen a little. Can you hear me OK? I can hear you fine, yeah. OK. Um, uh, so, no, but I, I can keep going till I get it to where I really like it. And, and I, you know, so sure, we're gonna, it's not, it's not a straight up, but it's, it's, we're gonna plateau, we're gonna improve, we're gonna go backwards a little, but it no longer really bothers me because if I don't like something, I can understand how to change it. I can feel it when it's kind of mediocre. And then I just push it further. You know, it's like 
being able to make mistakes and, or being able to change your work, modify it to understand what's going wrong, um, gives me a tremendous amount of control and, and understanding. So I can be experimental. It might not work out, but if it doesn't work out, I can just, I can just uh, change directions and do something else. Once somebody understands the fundamentals, and this is the piece that's really important, why CBP is so long, why we spend so much time. You know, if, if, if you said to me, Nick, I know you know how to drive a bus, but what if you get to a parking lot, you know, what if the road is a dead end? And I say, well, I know how to drive the bus. I just back it up and I go down another road. Like, so that's the same thing, right? Like our painting, sure, we'll hit roadblocks, but you just pivot and, and you can understand why it's not working and now you go down another direction, you know? And so it's, it's a much more lighthearted approach that your, your morale and your self-worth isn't tied up to like, I've made this painting and this is my work. It's like, as you've seen, and I've had many conversations with, uh, you know, alumni, they're producing so much work that it doesn't really matter whether one of them isn't that good. You can spend energy, wherever you put your energy, the work's going to get better. Wherever you put the yeah. work. And that, uh, just by the way, your picture has frozen up, but you're still with us, so. Oh, good, good, yeah. I don't know why that's happening, yeah. Um, but that's what brings us to the free workshop, which, um, because so much of, of what you're saying there, the ability to keep going relates to the ability, the, the knowledge of what you need to do to keep going, isn't it? Because I used to keep going and not get anywhere. Totally, and in the workshop, it's very tiring, right? Just, you're stuck and you just keep trying things over and over and over and over. And it's, it's crazy. It's, it, you, if you don't have an understanding of all the fundamentals, it, you can just spend a lot of time unnecessarily struggling. You're, you're always gonna struggle some, I still do, but it's nothing like what I used to do or, you know, it, it doesn't, it can take the fun out of it. You know. Yeah. So what is it, it, it that people can expect from the free workshop if they sign up and everybody you will, there's a link above this video for you to sign up. So please do. What, what the free workshop does is it gives you a sense of, well, first of all, my goal with it, this is really like, I'm trying to teach you some really solid information. You can, this can really shift and you'll see people in the workshop um, for all over the world, you know, and people will make having these aha moments. I'm explaining some of the really fundamental uh, key principles that I go over in, in the Creative Visionary program. And, and it, it, you should be able to uh, improve your work, like right away after like one video lesson, you'll start to see things that you probably haven't seen before. I don't, you know, art is not taught like this, so this is a different approach. and. Um, you know, so that's my goal. My other goal is that, you know, we're gonna have thousands of people go through this and we spend, the, my team and I, we spend the whole week teaching. We're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff in Facebook too. So it's this really fun, massive thing. But for some of you listening now, it will really connect as it did with Louise. That's a small percentage of people then will feel like, whoa, I just learned so much in, in a week, what could I learn in 12 weeks? What could I, you know, and so that's why we do the, the Creative Visionary Program. We offer that after. They now know if they can understand what I'm saying and, and it starts to make some sense, that's a really good indication of that this could be very, very helpful. So it's, it's just kind of a, uh, it's an inspirational, super helpful workshop. And then it gives people like a really clear idea of what, the creative visionary program is and whether it's going to work or not so and it's just fun it's it's really fun to to do them because we're not charged we don't charge for this and it's just you know this it's people come to it and are they're always really surprised at how much value they get out of it so yeah. it's 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 kind of the first introduction to the for a lot of people into the ecosystem of art to life it's about sharing information whether they take a program or not, it doesn't matter. It's just the community of artists out there just getting everyone's work going. And if they take this workshop and it feels like they can 
go further with their work and get bolder and it changes things, awesome. You know, that's like a total win for us, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you do. I mean, instantly I did that first evening of the, the first time I watched the video. Because for everybody watching, the workshop's delivered by email and you get videos to watch. And then you can go and comment and ask questions and Nick reads all those questions and he answers a lot of different, you know, gives some great answers. But I remember rushing over to here where I work above the garage and getting my paints out and tackling some stuck paintings um, when you had done the very first one. Um, uh -huh. Because it just explained to me what was wrong. Um, I think the first one was about design, wasn't it? So. Uh, I was just realizing, oh, I just need to change the shape of this and do this and the size of that. Right. And it just, the information that you, you giving people for free, as I've been telling everyone um, for a year now, is amazing whether or not they sign up for more. If they sign yeah. up for more, they're going to have, you know, the ride of their life. But also, I think the free workshop gives you the chance to find out if, if this is going to be for you. And yeah, yeah, totally. And the other thing we're doing this time, uh, you know, we have a the Art to Life free Facebook group, which uh, people can join. Um, we're going to be doing on the in between these in between the video lessons, I'm going to be going live in that Facebook group and going into it more this time, you know, like I'll be taking actual like samples of artwork and making changes. And you know, so, so it's, it's not just the three video lessons, it's, it's the supporting content in the time in between. So it's, it's like a week, you know. Um, so that, that's really cool. I think one of the things I remember, um, I never went to art school, but uh, people who had gone to art school had said that the free workshop and CVP, that you, that you learn things that somehow you never got in art school. Yeah. Uh, was that your experience? Oh yeah, yeah. This, you know, um, I went to an amazing art school. I went to Art Center in Los Angeles, and I mean, it was I, you know, I did really well there, and I studied really hard. But you know, the problem with art schools is that there's no one, uh, at least in my opinion, they don't put it together. You have different teachers teaching different things. You have someone teaching you drawing. You have someone teaching you color. But there's no one giving you an overview and an invitation to make your own personal work. It's sort of left open. So there's no system, it doesn't, there's no hierarchy. Like one of the things that, that I did that was helpful for me and all of this content, all of this stuff came out of me struggling on my own work. This is just how I started to organize it so I could be more productive and enjoy myself. But letting people, having people understand what things are more important than other things, what principles, you know, value of the lightness and darkness like that's really visually more important than color you know just these really important things to understand you know you can use a chainsaw or you can use a butter knife but it to, if people don't tell you which one's the better tool for cutting yeah. down a redwood tree it's gonna be pretty hard and, and they really don't tell you so that's what i'm interested in doing is giving this information so people have a totally solid uh background fundamentals but then they can just rip and just and do whatever they want to make whether it's painting drawing sculpture all these principles relate to it so it's it's a new approach it's a completely different approach and, it, and it's so fast relative to the grinding your way just trying to figure it out by yourself i mean it just takes so yeah. many years you know? it's so cheap compared to going to art school as well <laughs> so yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. The, well, that ties into the last question I had, really, which was, uh, how do I, this was from uh, Sharon, how do I overcome my fear of just attempting a painting, as I seem to be almost afraid of starting a new piece of work each time? And is that, no. is that the knowledge, is that having the knowledge that gives you that background? How do you get over being frightened of starting? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, but... Absolutely. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, starting to drive a car down a road and you hit a dead end, once you know how to back the car up, do a three point turn and go another direction, you're no longer so worried about it, you know? Um, and, and so that's what, you know, starting paintings, 
the way we frame it in CBP and how I teach people to do this is it is the most fun. I've got a whole approach to starting where you're just more experimental. It's more plain. When you're just playing around, and I try to, you know, if someone's really struggling with this, I try to say, you know, imagine there's like a five-year-old little kid sitting next to you who's really scared of painting. And you, you, what would you do for that person? You'd say, listen, here's a white board. I've got one, you've got one. Now listen, look at all these colors. Just play around for a while. It's so fun just to put this, look what happens when you put blue down. And, and that's how you need to just play. If, if you're feeling really stressed about it, don't think about trying to make something. Just find the play in it and enjoy yourself. But that's how I always teach people to start. And I start the same way. I don't have any plans. It's just more intuitive. But you, once you have some fundamentals, then you can convert this thing into something you like. It's not just about experimenting all the time. You want to make an amazing painting. And there's really solid fundamental information you need in order to do that. But the starting thing, the, the fear of the white paper, um, that goes away pretty quick when you're just, you know, you got to help your five-year-old self to in, enjoy themselves, you know. Why do you think we lose the ability to do that? I've always wondered that. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Um, I think it has to do with, um, uh, we're very concerned with what other people think of us. Uh, we are, our artwork is a very personal part of ourselves. And, and just like standing up and, and talking in front of a group, a lot of people are terrified to do that. There's, your, there's a vulnerability there because, you know, the inside of all the listeners who are listening here, the inside soul. And that's what we're after when you're making your art. That's your intuition. You know, Louise, you're saying you're, you're needing to paint bolder. Your, play, your soul knew all along. That's why you tended to, that's why you found the course. That's why this content resonated to you. You're just, you're just actualizing what you already knew inside deep down. But for whatever reason, we have a teacher in fifth grade that says you don't have any talent or your, uh, your older sister is more talented or, you know, the last thing you did didn't work out. Whatever those stories we have. Um, those just, those just get in our way, you know, and we, there's a lot of, we got to be responsible and life's hard and there's just a lot of negative, not negative necessarily, but just more practical stuff, um, yeah. that, that, that discourage us from just playing for the sake of playing. But when we play, that's when our soul comes out. And, and it, it, it is very powerful and it's an incredible business model. You know, it sounds very wooey, but like, I teach people, I work with people in like mentorship programs and stuff to, to really kill it making art. I mean, to do, have amazing careers in it. And this is the one career where when you're doing what you truly love and it's so much fun and it's so easy, it's also killer business. You get yeah. both. Yeah, it's the easier it's got for me. Yes. Uh, the easier paintings are the ones that sell. Yes. And the hard ones are the ones that I end up painting over again because yeah. I've made, but I've made it too hard. I just didn't let it be easy. And right. it can be easy and you keep forgetting that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's all about mindset and shifting how we're thinking. And this is what's so cool and really at the heart of what we're talking about. When we learn stuff, we learn color, we learn, that's all really good. But when we shift our thinking, everything changes and it changes fast and that's what we do in cbp that's what art to life is about it's the, it's the mental shifts but then it's getting rid of the limiting beliefs it's understanding how to how to do this how, how to create a process that this can enhance your life and make your amazing art so yep and i'm living proof that it works yeah <laughs> So, uh, for everybody, um, I know, Nick, you, you, you're still frozen, by the way, so I'm still looking at pictures. I know. I don't know why that I is. I know you're there somewhere. Um, I don't want to mess with it because I don't want to... No, no. It might be on my end because I don't have the best internet. But for um, everybody listening, if you didn't know about this workshop before, make sure you sign up. If you did know about, and the link is in the comments there, or it's at louisefletcherart.com backslash art number two life, or um, 
for anybody who is, is already signed up, which I know a lot of you are and you're eager to get going, uh, one last question, Nick, does anybody, do people need to prep anything? Do they need to have anything for this workshop or are they good to go? They're probably good to go, but what I would do is grab a couple of those paintings you're really stuck on and bring those out in your studio and, um, and let's try to kind of like, you know, it's cool to apply this, it's great to listen, but try to apply it, especially in the days between the, the free workshop, that's where we, people get the most, they're, they're taking the lessons, they're taking these ideas, and they're looking at their own work and problem solving it. That's what would be really, really great. I think that's a great idea, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And oh. you know, if they, if they go to the Art to Life Facebook group, and maybe I can send you a link for this, um, the free Facebook group, then they can actually like post their the art they're working on in there because everyone's going to be kind of looking what everyone's doing. It's it's just kind of cool to have the have the lessons learned on something you're working on. So that's what I would recommend. That, that's a good idea. So thing. That's is that art to life artists. The thing? Yes, it's the um, art to life. Uh, it's the art to life artists uh, group, and just uh, come on in there. That would be great. Yeah, so you can just search for that, everybody. Well, thank you, Nick. I, I'm going to see you again next week. Yes, but, yes, I'm excited. We're gonna, we're gonna. This is gonna be really cool because we'll be able to like dig down into some things and the questions you ask. Well, you know, it's different. It's a different audience. So I'm really happy that we're doing yeah, it. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. We'll talk again next week. Sounds great. Okay. Bye. Bye, bye everyone.